One of the new options available for feature cam in the 2.5D area is the drill mill option. So let's understand the concept of what drill mill is. Drill mill is a revolutionary new hole making capability that examines the current tool grip and then picks a process for every hole uh, based upon the tools that you have available, any defaults that you have set, and then using a combination of drilling and milling. Now the user may customize the defaults uh, at any point and the user may override the process at the feature level as well. So let's have a look at a process example. Imagine you have a 13 mm hole. Now if a 13 mm hole is on your part, uh, chances are this is quite an unusual size and you may not have the tooling for it. If you produce a thousand of these parts a week, maybe you have some special tooling that's been made for this process. So you ask the question, is there a 13 mm drill? If yes, then you drill the hole normally as you would do with feature cam. And this includes your spot drilling, pre-drilling and so on. However, invariably you might not have these tools. In which case, what we want to do is we want to automatically drill and mill the hole. This includes your spot drilling and pre-drilling, but it also includes the use of an end mill, maybe some helical machining, maybe some cutter compensation, but it will include the roughing and finishing operations to machine that hole. Let's look at this in an example. So I've loaded in a solid part. You can imagine the scenario, it's 5 to 6 on a Friday evening. The boss comes to you and he gives you this part and says, I want this machine by Monday morning. Now the first thing I would do if I get a solid part in feature cam is I go straight to my steps and I say I do an AFR. Let's just finish. So we do automatic feature recognition, find all our features as quickly as possible and use the advantage of the speed at which we can get NC code onto our machine using feature cam. Now as soon as I run this through a 3D simulation, straight away we can see there are multiple tool colours on this part. So what this means is there are a lot of tool changes occurring on this particular example. Now I'm using at the moment the default tools crib. So we've got a selection of approximately 4,300 tools to choose from and Feature Cam has selected a series of different tools for each of these holes. Now if I look at these holes on the part, to me this, the, they look quite similar in size but I need to interrogate this a bit more closely. So let's go into the part view. I'm just going to turn off the shading and then just highlight each of the patterns. So you can see we've got a pattern here of four holes around the part. I've got a pattern here and a line there. So I can see there are a group of different patterns. Now Feature Cam has intelligently grouped the whole sizes together in the patterns uh, as, as a grouping. So if we have individual patterns, these mean that these must be different size holes. So let's look a bit closely at the properties. So here I can see these ones in the corners are 250 thousandth of an inch. Likewise, select hole 2, we can see we've got 272, 261 and so on. So we've got various sizes of holes on the part. So what has this meant for the tool mapping? Well, let's have a look at it. And we can see Feature Cam has selected 11 different tools to fully machine this part. Now if I want to get this part machining on the machine as quickly as possible, or I have a limited number of tool slots, uh, having 11 tools being used on this part um, could, could seem, uh, or could create difficulty for me. And it could mean up to around two and a half hours just to simply set up these, these 11 different tools. So to get around this, what we're going to use is we're going to use the drill mill option. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the number of tools that I have available to me, first of all. So in the browser, what we'll see is there is a folder location here. If I click on that folder location, I've got a folder here, and inside here you'll see we've got an XML file, so this is my drill mill tool crib. So I'm going to copy that link, and I go into my manufacturing, into the tool manager, and I'm going to create a new crib. So let's call this drill mill. Say OK and I'm going to import tools from that location. So feature count 2010 drill mill, say OK, and say import. So it warns me I have 14 tools that have been imported from the crib. So this is basically three tools and 11 tool holders being brought in. So let's have a look at this. I've got three, uh, sorry, two end mills there. Scrolling down to my twist drills, I can see I've got one twist drill. So I've only got three tools to choose from inside this crib. 
So I'm going to activate this drill mark rib, say OK, save and save. So I now have the drill mill crib, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner here, this has been used for my operation. Let's pull the results window out and now have a look and you can see feature camera saying, well now you've got the uh, fewer drills available to me, I can't actually drill these holes. So it's got an exclamation mark telling me it cannot find a drill to fit these. Now I could override with that uh, 250 thousandth of an inch uh, tool, you can see this one here, but obviously these are different size holes. So what we do is we tackle this by using the drill mill option. So from the Manufacturing tab, I'm going to go into the Machining Attributes, and under the Drilling tab, you can see we have two options here. We have Drill Only and Drill Mill. So if I select Drill Mill and go into the Drill Mill Options, you can see we have a number of uh, different uh, options available to us for Drill Mill. So in this case, I've got the first option, which is Drill to Full Diameter. So this basically means if FeatureCam finds this drill operation, uh, it will drill, uh, sorry, drill tool, it will drill uh, the, the hole normally as it would do with any drilling operation. I've also selected this uh, rule here, which says uh, rough with an end mill and finish with an end mill. So this means if it fails to find a drilling tool, it will simply use a smaller end mill and rough out the hole and then finish with that uh, same end mill. I've also chosen to pre-drill any of those holes uh, with the twist drill if it's available and if it fits in that hole based on the sizing parameters that I've used. So let's say OK to that. Just notice the exclamation marks. Also notice these are drilling operations. As soon as I say OK, we'll see two major updates. So the first thing you'll notice is we have four drilling operations. We now have a series of pre-drill operations for the twist drill. Scrolling down, you now see we have roughing and finishing operations. So FeatureCam has intelligently selected roughing and finishing operations uh, with the end mill as opposed to uh, keeping those as drilling operations. Let's simulate this result in 3D. So now you can see there's all the pre-drill operations. Now you can see the roughing and finishing with the end mill. See the tool working its way down the part to finish the component. So now we can see clearly we've only got three varying colours of, of tool there. Um, obviously we've got the yellow ones on the outer edge which are the 250 thousandth of an inch holes and the rest of the component has been machined with that end mill. If I go back to that results tab and just simply select just before the pre-drill, so you can see we've pre-drilled all of those holes and you can see that's indicated by the yellow tool. Likewise, if I go into my tool mapping, you'll now see we only have three tools that have been selected from our drill mill crib, and that's going to make it a lot easier to set the machine up and get it going uh, ready for the evening. So looking at the capabilities, uh, drill mill supports obviously drilling, uh, then we have the drilling and milling, we can also use spot drills and reams. We can rough and finish with end mills. We have the cutter compensation and part line programming, helical ramping, and also counter bore operations. So what are the benefits? Well, the first one is we have smart automatic tool selection based on the current crib being used. So FeatureCam is intelligently looking at that crib and choosing the tools uh, that are available from that crib only. There is built-in intelligence in terms of FeatureCam will only machine uh, drilling operations where it has a drill that fits and it will swap between the uh, uh, finishing and roughing operations uh, if it has to select an end mill. Ultimately this can save money, it can save money in terms of the setup time of the, the machine itself. Uh, we have a reduction in the programming time because you're not having to change tools over and select different items on the part. It can save running time if you have a lot of tool changes occurring in the part itself. It can save on the tooling requirements. You don't need as many tools sat on the shelf because FeatureCam is trying to intelligently select those from the crib that are available. And it's great for moving parts between machines because you can simply select varying cribs and simply update the, the part with the different crib and it will update the machine, machining tool paths as well. The second level of benefits, well it's ideal for one of a kind parts when you've got to get it onto the machine as quickly as possible. It's great for prototype shops to use. It's also good for complex parts where the tool carousel would ordinarily be full. 
We get better automatic feature recognition results uh, through the tool selection. And we also have the ability to, to cope with limited turret slots on terminal machines. Uh, this is uh, one of the sort of must-needed upgrades for 2.5D and terminal customers. So this is why you should be uh, looking to sort of update your maintenance. Thank you very much.